John, for all of its technology and surveillance prowess, the reality is, though, Israel missed this. Why do you think that's the case? I spoke with General Ben Hodges yesterday. He told me this was a catastrophic intelligence failure by the Israeli government and its allies, including the United States. Yeah, look, failure is part of the game, unfortunately. When you take risks, when you build technology, things go wrong and you miss things. And uh, we know this in high tech, not every investment works at our crowd. We're very proud of our successes, but we own up to our failures. And uh, while we're fighting, we're not gonna go too much into this, but at the end of this process, we will learn the lessons, hopefully make the right corrective action. But clearly we missed it, okay? This was not something which uh, Israeli's tech sector or Israeli's leadership should be proud of. Uh, they did what they wanted to do, which is to slaughter as many people. More Jews were killed on Saturday than in any day since the Nazis stopped killing Jews in the Holocaust. I think that we have to sit back and look and say, what has happened here? How has the world gone so unbelievably nuts that people in the modern age will simply go and slaughter? And that's what their geopolitical goal is, to kill Jews. And uh, by the way, they managed to kill lots of Arabs. They killed Arab Israelis. They killed Thai citizens. They killed tourists. They just killed indiscriminately. So yes, we were caught uh, by surprise and there was a, a colossal set of failures, but we're focusing now on the heroic stories of people who resisted, people who saved their families uh, and saved others, and now we're going to go simply take apart this Hamas regime. Indeed, John, but uh, of course this has to be condemned, but uh, it has also been a really historic year for Palestinian um, casualties and Palestinian deaths. Of course, uh, the Palestinians blaming the Israelis for an escalation of tensions on the ground there, whether it's at Alaska Mosque or anywhere else. And clearly this is the retaliation and the response. So do you think that Bibi Netanyahu also perhaps has to accept responsibility and lay some of the blame for this, for failing to calm tensions through the course of the year. This all comes back to the Arab-Israeli conflict and the way that Israelis treat Palestinians on the ground. No, I, I, Dan, I'm, I'm sorry, I disagree. I'm, I'm looking, for example, at one of the reasons why this happened is because we were being so successful in reaching accommodation and reconciliation with our Arab neighbors. As you know, we're on the, the brink of a historic agreement with the Saudis and uh, already have made uh, yeah, historic that agreements. that's to with... happen now, though, doesn't it, John? Well, it, the it, peace it, process, it certainly process has is been not... completely halted as a result of this, no? Well, you know, uh, if you can make, make decisions based on two or three days, I think that the uh, absolute strategic imperative of bringing Arabs and Jews together bringing regional integration. I am heartened by the way that the UAE government and Bahraini government have responded and said, this is wrong. 